I have two more properties of groups that I'd like to prove. The first one is that inverses are unique. In the last theorem we proved that there was a unique identity, but now we want to prove that inverses are unique as well. So, similar to how we proved it for the identity, let's assume that we have two different inverses for something. So let's assume A is an element, and B and C are both inverses. Well, that would mean that a times B is equal to the identity E, but also A times C would be equal to the identity E. Again, that's what it means to be inverses. But if those are both equal to the identity, they have to be equal to each other. And now we can use that left cancellation rule that we just proved. I have a times b equals a times c, b equals c, there we go. We had two different inverses, but they actually were the same thing. That must mean there's only one actual inverse. The next one, sometimes called the socks shoes property, and I've actually put into the homework for you to think about why that would be. But we want to prove that if you have two things multiplied together and taking the inverse, you can take the inverse of each individual element, but you have to reverse the order. Well, really, to show this, all we need to show that it actually fits what an inverse is supposed to do. That is, if I take AB times B inverse A inverse, I can do some associativity stuff and say that's the same thing as A times B, B inverse times A inverse. B times B inverse we know has to be the identity, so we've got A, E, A inverse. If we do A times E, that has to be A a inverse and a times a inverse is equal to e. But to be an identity it has to work both on the left and the right. So I also have to check that b inverse a inverse times a b. That should also come out to be the identity and it's very similar. Do some associativity stuff and we get b inverse times A inverse A times B. That's B inverse times E times B. That's B inverse times B, and that's the identity. So multiplying by B inverse A inverse on the right gave us the identity. Multiplying by B inverse A inverse on the on the left gave us the identity, therefore B inverse A inverse has to equal a, the inverse of AB.